Hi folks, um, me from the future here, just before you watch this video, um, just a quick trigger warning really, it doesn't have the happiest ending, so if you're hoping to see a restoration that goes successfully, uh, and if you don't get that it's going to trigger you, maybe don't watch this, I don't know. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. I lost this one, um, yeah it's a little bit frustrating to be honest, but hey, enough about me, how the hell are you? Hi folks, how you doing? I'm back with the Zenith again and what I want to do today is start stripping it down and having a look at the capacitors because if you've seen the previous episode, powered this thing up, it ran for a while and then one of the capacitors in the power supply went bang. So, what I want to do is strip it down, take a look at all the capacitors, get those ordered and then replace them all and see if there's anything else that might need attention while we're in there as well so um yeah let's get into it i suppose do you know what while we're in here let's pull this let's pull this battery out Right, screen's free, so let's go about getting this power board out again. So, it was quite simple actually. It was, um, screw here. Uh, there was a screw down here. And there's one at the side, right there there okay lovely I'll pick that up later and the module the whole module just pulls right out fantastic and what have we got we've got two multi plugs there as well Attach those. Lovely, right. One power module, so we'll come to that later. Right, um, let's see about getting these drives out and what's holding them in. So I've got a blanking plate that can come away. Probably the keyboard next, actually. Make more sense. Let's do that. So, keyboard, I've got two screws here. Let's take those out. Ah, there's two at the top. So, yep, yeah, that's free, I think. Yep, yeah, there it goes. Okay, and that's attached by a ribbon cable. I assume I just need to... In fact, let me get in a bit closer with the camera. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed and hold the camera. I've got a little ribbon cable it's holding the keyboard in. I'm assuming I just need to flick the release catch up and that will free off. Can I get a screwdriver in there? Yes I can. I've got a green dot to the left, I'll just make a note of that. When it goes back together and keyboard is free. Lovely. Okay, the keyboard is free. Let's continue dismantling, I suppose. How do these drives come out? Floppy drive looks free on that side. In fact, you know what? Let's, um... Grab a mount here. I've got one here here and here okay let's take those out still something got that what exactly 
Oh, there it goes. There's one. Yeah, those drives are free, so let me just get this tape off the top. This piece of insulation. Okay. I can do it without damaging it. That's a bonus. Hey. And. Come on. Hard drive. Out. Floppy drive. I oh I still have a screw holding that in place. So there's one down there. Lovely. And the cable. If it will, doesn't want to let go. There it goes. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Let me pause while I just organise these parts and then we'll continue with the strip down. Right, I could do with getting this modem out and I think the screws are on the other side for that. So, let's do that. Presumably this just slides out. Yes, it does. Look at that. Easy as that. Okay, uh, next. I want to try and get this board out if I can. So we're free at the back. We're still held in here. So what's under this? Ah, that'll be the CPU. Okay. Let me try and get a bit of a, a bit of a close up on that. And we have an Intel 8386SX. So I thought it was the 386. Yep, yeah, that confirms it. That's what we've got. All right, let's continue. What have we got? Well, the, um, I was saying the IDE cables can come out, but I don't think it's IDE with this computer. It's more like the IDC, I would imagine. So. Whatever, let's remove the floppy cable. Hard drive. Lovely. And there's a piece of backing plastic which should come out of the way. Not yet. No, nope, there's a more I need to. Yeah, this will need to come out first. Okay, what are you? You look like some sort of memory expansion. So you can come out. Where are you? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Okay, I don't want to force that. Let's try and get this shield enough. Um, right, how do you come out? Why are you not separating? Hang on, let me do this off camera. Okay, do you know what? It was just pin headers. They were just a bit crudded up. In fact, they're extremely crudded up. So, um, yeah, I'm glad they took me time with that. I didn't want to break anything. But let's continue. Right, should be able to get this out now. And I can. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let me just pour all this to one side. Right, what next? Uh, let's get the PC speaker unplugged. And what would this be? I don't know. What's on the other side? Oh yeah, that's the back. That's the backup battery connector. So that can be unplugged as well. I'll have to source a replacement battery. So this looks like a little micro switch at the back, just for telling the computer if the lid's open or not. So let's just unplug that. He says. There it goes. 
I should be able to lift this board out now, but feels like there's still something holding it in. Ah, right there, right there. Should that be it? Should it be free? Yes. Right, board's out. So what are we looking at? That looks like a memory module. And we've got the CPU. Keyboard connector, floppy connector. Hard drive connector. It's very, very dirty. We've got a bodge wire that's running all the way through to the other side of the board, right there. On the other side, I assume they're the ROMs. And then we've got all the custom chips. And this is where all the electrolytics are living. And some of them look fine, and some of them really really don't so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip through make a note of all the values anything I don't have I will order and I'll change them just for safety's sake before I put power to this again yeah okay there aren't that many okay so it's a couple of days later and parts are starting to turn up I've got a pile of capacitors sitting next to me so Let's have, a, let's have a go at starting to repair some of this stuff. And why not start with the bit that actually exploded? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, so I want to clean this board up, recap it. And I think I'm going to start by getting this heat sink off. seems to be stuck there we go yeah I'll have to redo that thermal compound well that's a way so while we're at it let's just put a bit of vinegar in there a bit of white vinegar and let's just see if we can clean these screws up a little bit and they can sit overnight frankly yeah, I'm going to guess that that thermal paste wasn't doing a fantastic amount. It's all dried out, it's gone to chalk. So um, yeah, that's going to need renewing and it's also going to need renewing on the voltage regulator as well. Let's begin buzzing some capacitors out and let's start with the one that popped, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, the, um, the top had blown and the bottom looked like it was about to bulge and fall out as well. There's that. Do you know what? I think I need to clean up underneath it too. Yeah, it's not looking very good at all. Look. Oh yeah, that's let go all right. Wow. And that one, that's a mess. That is a mess. 
Okay, I'm going to do the rest of this off camera and just take me time and get this board cleaned up because I'm finding an awful lot of damage on it. So, um, so yeah, I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, that's done. That took me a long, long time actually, and all the capacitors on it were rotten too. And the board, if this will focus, yeah, you'll probably see it around the edges. There's quite a lot of board rot. But not so bad that I had to run any bodge wires. I mean, all the connections seem good. So hopefully I've caught it in time, but we'll see. It was a mess. It doesn't look good now, but it should work. I'm assuming it will anyway, who knows. Yeah. Every single capacitor had failed. So we've got, well, we'll start with this one. That'll focus. Yep, yeah, that's the one that blew its top, quite literally. But we've got things like this as well, which are fine from the top. But when you look underneath, yeah, they've started failing and they dropped the guts all over the board. So I spent an awful lot of time cleaning this up with IPA to make sure I've got all the rot out of it. It's not going to get any worse and I think I think it's as good as it's going to get, so I've given it its best possible chance of working. Um, don't ask me what any of these um, components names will be on the board, because as I was cleaning it, all the uh, silk screening was coming off. But anyway, I'm not going to worry about that either, as long as the components are working and all the connections are still good. And I think they are. So all I need to do now is put the heat sink back on it. So, right, how did this go? Like that, I believe. So let's get some thermal paste. I hope I've got enough. And I'm sure there'll be somebody who's telling me I'm putting either too much or too little on, but um, whatever. There we go, and I've already cleaned up the switch and the power socket, and that just plugs right in. So that goes like that. And there we go. That is that board complete. And that is me for the evening, I think, because that's literally taken me all evening. Because I spent so much time making sure everything was clean. Okay, um, for you it'll take no time at all, but for me I'll crack on with another board tomorrow. Okay, it's another day and another few circuit boards to, to look at, I think. So just a very quick recapping on these three and a bit of a clean up as well. And I am only going to do these three today because at the time of recording, it is 30 degrees in this room. There's no wind outside and it's disgusting. And if I work any longer, I think I'll pass out. So, two memory boards. That's definitely a memory board. I'm fairly certain this is as well. And that's the modem. And that's built on two different, um, two different levels. And let me zoom in on this. It's got, I don't know what this stuff is, all this white stuff that seems to be accumulating around it. It might be some sort of corrosion, it might be salt, I don't know, but I want it gone because I don't want it eating the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder this top board and separate it so I can get right inside it and clean it properly. Yeah, and I think if I get those three done that should, uh, that should do for today. Well that took forever but I'm glad I've separated the boards now because that white stuff is just 
everywhere. So at least now I can get in and clean this thing up properly. Um, let's take this chip out actually and then I can clean the connections on that too. Okay, lovely. It's another day, it's another circuit board, uh, the main board in this case, and I need to be really careful with it because there are bodge wires running all over this thing, and I really don't want to disturb them if I can avoid it. So, I've taken some really high res pictures of where everything runs to, so if I do disturb anything I should be able to put it back, but um, yeah, I'm just going to have to be very, very careful. So. There's a few caps on this board which I'll change. There's not that many. These ones look a bit rough. So I think I think it's a good idea to swap them out. I'll pull the ROMs out as well and just clean the sockets and make sure they're good. I will pull the CPU out as well. Same reason. Before I do any of that though, because it's covered in fluff, I've just got a can of air. And I'm just going to blow some of the mess off it. That'll do. Right, okay. Let's make a start on swapping these caps out first, I think. And then we'll clean the board up after that. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Right, so it's been five evenings of extremely hard work and this is the result. So Modems back together, that's all cleaned up, replaced the caps, RAM boards, same thing, everything seemed fine with those. Power board, which is back here, is now done. The main board, yeah, I have recapped it, but this is where I've had issues. Now, two or three of the caps seemed okay, and that's it. Every single other capacitor on this board had failed in a major way. They'd all leaked. They'd all done some damage. In fact, some of them, you could just literally get hold of them and pull them and the whole thing had come off the board. They were absolutely rotten. I don't know how this thing was powering up in the first place when I last tried it. I really don't. So, it's taken me a long time to replace these caps because the solder had been contaminated with the electrolyte, which meant it was almost impossible to melt. And it's triple, it's, well it's at least um, a triple layer board and I think the earth runs through the middle. So that layer was very difficult to desolder. But I had to persevere with it because I needed to get all the contaminated solder out of it. There was a bit of track damage. Uh, I've not had to run any bodge wires but I've just found um, an extra blob of solder was enough to restore the connection in some places. So that's all I've done. I think I've got all the corrosion out of it. But honestly at this point I'm going to give it 50-50. We'll see if this thing works or not. I really don't know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refit it into the case. And we'll put some power to it and see what happens, I suppose. Alright, so we're back together kind of loosely. Yeah, let's see if anything else decides to blow up. Power light. Hard drive. I've got a screen. It's very faint. This happened before. It's there. Brightness controls doing nothing. Yeah, I've got a screen. Just a very, very dim one. You're not even going to see it on the camera, I don't think. It's telling me bad configuration found in CMOS. Uh, escape to continue. And it's trying to spill up the hard drive. Okay, it's put me back in the bias again. I have a very dim screen. I may have a problem with the backlight. So. That's the next job, I think, is take the screen apart and see what's going on in there. The computer itself seems to function. But I don't want to push it. In fact, I'm going to switch it off now until I've had a proper look at that screen and I can figure out what's going on. Okay, so update on the screen. Yeah, I um, I took it out of the case. I had a look at the lamps. I powered it up. 
And yeah, the um, the backlights has failed, so it will need a new one of those. But I was getting some strange artifacting on the screen, and sometimes it'd work, and sometimes it wouldn't. And pressing on this little ribbon at the back, well, that seemed to improve it and affect the picture. Um, the rots got into it, unfortunately. Um, this is somewhat depressing given all the work I've just put into this machine. But um, yeah, the um, the contacts have corroded and they're starting to pull away from the board. The adhesive that holds this ribbon cable on has failed and it pretty much fell off. I've tried to repair it. I tried to do some drag soldering to see if I could tack it back down again. But the contacts are just, they're just too far gone. So the screen, the screen is complete junk. Um, that's really annoying. So, where are we up to? The computer runs. How well I don't know, because I've not done any in-depth testing yet. But I can't go any further till I source a new screen. So I'm going to keep my eye out. I don't know when that's going to be, or even if I can get hold of one, or if there's an aftermarket alternative that would be even compatible with this. I don't know. So, until I can sort out a new screen, this project's on hold, but yeah, that's a little bit frustrating, to say the least. But, um, but what can you do? I mean, the whole computer was so far gone that I shouldn't be surprised to be, to be an issue like this, but... Um, yeah very frustrating but i'll make another another episode involving this machine as and when i can get a replacement screen for it i have no idea when that's going to be i'll just keep me ear to the ground until then i'm gonna to have to wrap this up here because I, I literally can't go any further at the moment so yeah frustrating but thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one thanks bye